Let's put how it was it hanging out with Bruce Lee? How was it hanging out with Bruce Lee? Uh, it depended on what else was going on on any given day. Hmm. Um, Bruce could be very mellow and mm -hmm. very philosophical. He could be very hyper. <laughs> he had a temper when he got angry. He could get very agitated. Um, but the truth of it was, just as quickly as he would get angry, it was like a thunderstorm. It would be over, you know. Um, in the bipolar, in, a, almost no, in the bipolar no. sense? Okay, okay. No, I, look, as you know, producers are prone to exaggeration and everybody <laughs> likes to overtell stories. Mm, yeah. Uh, of course, I have my share of stories of Bruce losing his temper. But he was probably right to lose his temper. We work in a high pressure business and when things don't go the way they're supposed to, you have a right to be irritated. When you have as much writing on the movies as Bruce had writing on the movies, he had every right to be aggravated. That didn't mean that he was always right or that him being aggravated was going to change things. And it wasn't a daily occurrence. On the other hand, I've seen Bruce stop things and say, wait a minute, that was rude. Let's be polite to these people. Let's give them face. Let's treat them like human beings. Don't just walk all over people. And he would go out of his way to be nice to the, you know, the lowliest set runner or the lowliest uh, assistant grip or camera assistant. So in that sense, he was very egalitarian. Mm -hmm. um, he had a terrific sense of humor. He could be very, very generous, uh, both in terms of his time and uh, in terms of, you know, gifting people clothes, watches, whatever. Uh, in that sense, he was a very genuinely sweet human being. Now, the truth of it was, he could also be a very agitated and aggravated young movie star <laughs> when he didn't like the way things were going. And yeah, he got angry enough that he would yell and scream. I never saw him lose his temper and punch someone. I saw him accept the challenge, the famous challenge on the set of Enter the Dragon. In the tennis court, right? On the tennis court, but he wasn't angry. And I've already told the story too many times to tell it again, but the truth was he consciously made a decision to teach the kid a lesson, but to not really hurt him. Okay? I've seen other actors and I've seen other name actors, a lot less mature, actually take pleasure in hurting a stuntman or clipping an actor just because they were dickheads. Yeah. They should go nameless. You're in the industry, you know what happens. That's not who Bruce Lee was. And in fact, I share the same values that he had. Nothing was worse than to see that kind of nonsense on a set. It's wrong. Yep. For sure. Just point blank wrong. It has no place in the filming of movies one way or the other. It doesn't matter if they're martial arts movies or they're ballet. You know, you've got to be respectful of your fellow workers. It's hard work. It's dangerous work. Uh, people do get hurt. So in that sense, Bruce was terrific. A lot of fun and a lot of laughs. I didn't expect it to only last a year and four months. You know what I mean? People say, oh, you enter the dragon. Mm -hmm. It's hard for everybody to understand when we made Enter the Dragon, we didn't see it as being the high point of his career. Enter the Dragon was supposed to be the sampler that we could show to Warner Brothers and to the Western world and say, hey, look what we can do. Give us a bit more money. <laughs> Give us a bit more time. And we'll make movies that'll knock your socks off. And it has already been reported, again, no great revelations, but it's true. Bruce's fantasy was he would make one movie a year in Hollywood and one movie a year 